In the 50s, Elvis Presley has been the rebel, the outsider who blasted in the age of rock and roll. But in the 60s, while Elvis is busy making movies, there's a second revolution, the British invasion, headed by four Liverpool lads who idolize Elvis. In 1965, while the Beatles are taking America by storm, they visit Elvis, the man who inspired them in the first place, and a rock and roll summit is arranged. It is supposed to be a secret, but somehow word gets out. It is a night that changes history, and a night that is ominous for Elvis Presley, the rebel as well. August 16th, 1977. Elvis Presley goes into his bathroom and suddenly suffers a seizure. Perhaps the defining moments of his life flash before his eyes like so many scenes in an incredible movie. It is 1965, and the Beatles are absolute sensations. The biggest phenomenon since, well, since Elvis himself. They dominate pop culture the way Elvis did eight years earlier, with a number one single, a number one album, and a number one movie, all titled Help. Elvis's current movie, Tickle Me, is a flop, and it's been years since he made a real rock and roll record. Still, there's only one person the Fab Four really want to see while they tour America. And in August of 65, before playing the Hollywood Bowl, they call on Elvis at his gated Beverly Hills home. And there was thousands of kids outside the house who get leaked out. There was thousands all over the walls, the fences, everywhere. John Lennon, Elvis uh, Presley. Uh, Paul McCartney, Elvis Presley. Uh, George Harrison, Elvis Presley. And all of a sudden, the Beatles are walking in the house. And it's like, you know, introducing royalty to royalty. One thing leads to another, and they come in, and the Beatles, being very, very shy people, were sitting there, and nobody said anything. And they're just staring at them now. There's a moment of silence. And as a matter of fact, it was a long moment of silence. So finally, Elvis sits there, and he's nervous, and the Beatles are sitting there, and they don't know what to say. Finally, he just looked at him and he said, hey, look, if y'all are going to stare at me all night long, I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed, man. Yeah, I was kind of hoping we could uh, sit around and talk, uh, maybe about music, uh, maybe even jam. Jam. And when he said that, they just went nuts. And, you know, because that was a dream for them. So then they got up and went by the piano, and they started singing. I mean, every one of us had said, boy, if we just had a tape recorder, that would have been fantastic. surface, it appears to be a light-hearted jam session. But the Beatles are painfully aware of Elvis's decline as the king of rock and roll. John Lennon is the Beatle who finally breaks the ice on this touchy subject. Mr. Lennon cornered Elvis in one part of the house and said, uh, well, Elvis, how come you, you, know, you don't cut any more rock and roll records like you used to? And Elvis replied, uh, well, you know, it's my film schedule. It's kind of tight, but... Uh, Maybe I'll cut one soon just for kicks. And Lennon replied, well, in that case, we'll buy that one. I'll bet it shook Elvis up a little bit. Lennon was just uh, arrogant enough to sort of slap his face a little and say, Elvis, why aren't you making the records like you used to, the great records that made us want to be musicians? So come on, cut some rock and roll again. I ain't got no matches, but I should. To go. Oh, yeah. By the time they left, you know, they, they had said this was the greatest night, and uh, Paul and John, uh, in particular, had said, well, look, if you guys are not doing anything tomorrow, how about coming over to see us? And Ella said, well, I'll try. Well, we knew he wasn't going to go. A dream is born that night in the heart of Elvis Presley. A burning desire to get back to his rock and roll roots. It will take him three years to realize that dream. And by then, there will be other complications in his life.